Thank you. I have a story to share with you. And it's the story of my father, Sir Olatero Lagbege, the late Oloa Ofowo, and the knight of the British Empire. My father was blessed with many wives and over 120 children. Yes. We're a village. <laughs> you know, I, I always say to myself, it takes a great man to raise so many successful children. He was a very generous person, and he loved people, and people loved him back. He could relate to the young, to the old, and I imagine if he was still alive, he still have been able to relate with you here. My father did not see status, but he saw people. Having grown up in a huge family, I've learned to deal with people of different biases. It's a trait I learned from my dad. My dad would often say, in your last me, meaning people are my treasure. As I watched my dad preside over a myriad of cases in his lifetime at the Igbimaleli, Igbimaleli, you know, it's a huge courtyard in the palace where elders, the chiefs, and the people gather to resolve conflicts. And my father, like King Solomon in the Bible, applied wisdom, fairness, and grace in resolving these conflicts. Little did I know at the time that I was taking in quite a bit of that, as I would use some of these experiences to build my organization many years after. I still credit my strength of character to the moments I spent with them. My mother, on the other hand, Anu Lori, a retired head teacher, very strict, understated, a very strong personality. My mom was loved by people, always ready to support and always ready to resolve issues for people. I did house chores like it was going out of fashion. And I studied so hard, I thought I would become an engineer, but sorry, <laughs> not too close. But I'm so amazed at her ability to connect people and engage people on an emotional level. And today she's 85, but she's still a powerhouse. But one of the greatest lessons I learned from her is empathy and a great relationship management person. That's my mom. I'm married to a most erudite gentleman. <laughs> Not even a village girl like me. Thank you. But proud to meeting my husband, I floated through organizations doing different things from an account officer to a tax auditor to even a salesperson selling household things to a PR officer. I just floated around. But one day, I had a first peek into a well-structured environment. And that was at his workplace. At the time, he worked with a multinational in Lagos. The ambience of this office was fantastic. The people were impeccably dressed. And there was this unrehearsed professionalism they exuded. For me, that was the first time I ever thought of a structured career. And one of the things I've learned in my 20 years of marriage to Nia is that everyone has a voice and everyone deserves respect. Having children teach you patience. I have four sons. And I'm now in the University of Patience. <laughs> but one thing I've learned, though, is that we have to learn to investigate their reactions and actions rather than focus on their mode of expression. That we can do. 
And same goes with employees in our organizations. I've also learned that nurturing our children, it's same as nurturing and mentoring the talents we have in organizations. And having relationship with these children also teaches how we relate with others in some ways. You know, having a strength of character, patience, empathy, you know, actually helps us as human beings. Helping people in need as well also help us in managing others and in relating with others. All these experiences that I shared have helped me in shaping my approach to inclusion, employee engagement, and well-being in the workplace. I work in an office that just really looks like it's a home away from home. My colleagues have fun every time. Fun is what we do in the office. And fun is an integral part of who we are in my organization. We have so much fun. And this is just an average day in our organization. You cannot tell apart the logistic officer, the fleet officer, the security officer, the mid-level and the senior management team from any of the pictures. And that's who we are. You know, with the myriad of issues that we have, with the challenges that we have in our country today, and even as individuals, you can imagine adding all of that together and coming into an unfriendly and a seemingly hostile office environment. What it tells me is a lose-lose situation, both for the employees and the employers. And so that is why in my organization, we've created a space just for us to have fun and just for us to release pressure. Our space enables you to go in there, watch TV, play board games, relax, sleep whenever you can, and then come back to work when you're ready. All this gives a sense of balance to every individual. In the same organization, we have engagement activities. We have our health work, we have our picnics, we have pizza days. Pizza days, not nights. Because sometimes we just want to gather everyone together in the afternoon and just talk over pizza or chicken wings. <laughs> For some of us there who are not so used to pizza, so we take chicken wings, you know. And you will be amazed at the amount of intelligence you just gather by bringing everybody together. We have our fantastic weekend. And that's where we have our sporting activities for families, for friends, for clients, for industry players, where we all come together and just generally have fun. What is wrong in having fun in organizations? And the job is still going. So we work so hard and we play really hard as well. You know, one of the things we try to do is to have open communication and let the most superior argument win, even against me, through the rank and file of the organization. Because everyone has the right to talk. And we have very strong visuals in the organization that also helps us to inspire us to be better, to be who we are or who we want to be. For instance, I'm not here to be average, but I'm here to be awesome. 
You can imagine seeing these words every day. Not only will it inspire you to do the job you want to do, but it helps you to think of who you are and the direction you want to go. So several of these activities have helped us in the organization. Now, we have to measure the level of engagement of everyone in the organization. And the best way to do that is to communicate. It's to interact, break every emotional and communication barrier. And that's what we've been able to do. So that's way everyone is free to talk. A lot of the times, we also have to ensure that our direct reports, the executives, the managers, the supervisors, are also translating the engagement strategies to those who work with them. These are some of the implementations that we've had, and it's working. Employee engagement enables inclusion, so no one is left out. We do a lot of training, capacity building training, both here and outside the country. Not because we want to expend so much, but because it's good and great that everybody's seeing the chorus, not only the leadership, every rank and file in the organization must see everything that is happening in the organization. Transparency is key. Integrity is key. When I make mistakes, I admit them. So it sets the tone for everyone to admit and take responsibility. What to see is ownership. People will take ownership, and the commitment is high. I always advise a lot of the times that when we share our issues in the organization, it helps to reduce the tension of individuals. You can call it workplace counseling, but it works. It works. I believe our offices should actually be a safe haven for us. And so we share our issues. We counsel each other. Engagement in the organization helps us to grow and it enables the organization to do better. Our gross misconduct over the years has reduced to almost zero. The fraud cases that we've had have been drastically reduced. But you will wonder, fraud? Yes, I have almost 7,000 staff, and 70% of them deal with tons of cash every day, but I am super happy that the level of fraud has reduced to almost to the barest minimum. And this is because of our engagement activities. It works. Our initiatives work. As leaders in the organization, we have to be conscious and we have to be ready to give and commit to inclusion, to employee engagement. Because those are ingredients that enable organizations to grow. We have experienced higher sales. We've experienced higher shareholder return. And of course, the career path of the employees as well have actually been better. We see a lot of them who have done great things in their personal lives, it enables them to think of doing even greater things. And even the family members are also beneficiaries of these engagement initiatives. I would enjoin leaders here to please include in their budgets engagement cost, because the long-term impact of engagement in the workplace far outweighs the investment. And so I would like to conclude that the culture of inclusion, transparency, integrity, 
are all the ingredients that we need to have as leaders. And the burden of inclusion, of employee engagement, well-being in the workplace, it's the responsibility of all leaders the responsibility of everyone, the burden of inclusion, of employee engagement and well-being, is the responsibility of leaders. The burden is on us. Thank you for listening.